Hello. Uh, Hello. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, just quickly, uh, a few things about myself. Uh, my name is Piri. I prefer Piri. Um, and in case you, in case it so happens that you need to get in touch with me, um, you can email me. My email address is uh, beamed up there, and I believe it's also on Vula. Um, but besides that, I sit in the center for ICT for this. So in the event that you need to physically come and chat to me, you can just come up the third floor. It's room 3A. It's an open space, so you can just ask around. And if, if you don't see me, just ask around, and people will be able to point out exactly where um, I might be at, at that point. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you guys uh, for the next three weeks, uh, um, and we're going to do functions and testing together. After which, uh, Dr. Dorenzi will continue off from me. Um, and I believe he's going to uh, look at arrays, uh, advanced data structures, um, and can't quite remember what else he's going to teach you guys. <clears throat> um, so another thing is, um, so my, my slides are pretty much going to be structured following the departmental book. Um, I'm, I'm assuming pretty much everybody has access to the book, the ACT book. Um, that's one of the reasons why I've, I've structured my slides to align, um, you know, them with the book itself. Anyone without a book in here? Everybody has access to the book, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, any questions before we start? No questions. Okay. So we've 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 pretty much spent the last the last couple of weeks, you know, looking at. Uh, I think what we would call unstructured code, right? Um, and what we've pretty much been doing is um, writing a series of statements, you know, within um, generic Python uh, files, right? And then, you know, um, after which we'll execute them, right? Um, but what, what we want to do going forward is to, to try and um, get a sense of how we can appropriately structure, you know, um, those statements into. Um, so code constructs, that would make it a lot easier for us to be able to, to reuse um, and, and otherwise be able to sort of like cut out the deduplication that sort of like takes place when, when we write uh, code using that approach, right? So as, as a simple example, you know, um, so assuming I was, I, was, I was asked you guys to, you know, kind of write a simple program that will print out, um, let's say, a maximum of two numbers, right? Um, the, the normal approach would be that you'd you obviously uh, use the input, the input function, right, um, and possibly prompt the user to enter the two numbers, yeah, and then you'd have uh, obviously a series of statements, probably if-else statements, to try and compare if the first number is you know less than or greater than the second number, and in in, in which case you'd return the first number, uh, otherwise you'd return the second number, right? Um, so as a simple example, if it was uh, uh, an input of five and nine, then the answer would be nine, right? Uh, can we all, are we, at this point, are we all able to do this, by the way? Yes, we are, right? Yes, uh, great. <laughs> so, but what we're going to do is we're going to see how, how we can, so as, as opposed to, well, anyway. So, as, as opposed to, you know, writing a generic if-else statement, we're going to, well, just, that's just pretty much hanging. We're going to see how best we can, we can uh, incorporate, you know, the series of statements that would otherwise write into a function, right? That's the whole point of functions. So, in essence, what a function is is it's um, it's it's actually a, a series of statements, right? Um, that, when collectively combined together, perform a, speci a specific task, right? So, as an example, um, the the uh, maximum function that I, the maximum uh, logic that I sp spoke about previously, the five and nine example, um, you, you could you could easily come up with with a function that would be able to to perform a specific function of returning the maximum of two input values that a user would otherwise um, um, input at at the prompt, right? Um, but what what we need to realize is that um, for those of us who don't know already, is we've pretty much been implicitly making use of uh, of functions, right? Um, so remember these things. We, this is probably one of the most uh, 
you know, common statements that you've pretty much been using, uh, the print statement and then the, the, the length statement, which computes the length of a string if you, if you apply it to a string, um, the square root function for the math function, and finally the input uh, function as well, right? So what, what the Python interpreter actually does is it, when you come up with a function, right, what the Python interpreter does is it, it um, at, at the point when you invoke the function, it pretty much stops doing what it was previously doing up to the point when it finishes uh, executing the function that you might otherwise uh, have evoked at that point, right? Um, and what functions do is they, they enable us to sort of like reuse code and to ensure that we come up with code that is modular, right? Okay, so here's, here's how we go about defining a function, right? Um, it's, it's actually quite, quite simple. You, you first of all start off by uh, specifying the def keyword, right, def, um, and then immediately what follows afterwards is the function name. So this is user-defined, right? Um, so just, just quickly, do you, you, you do understand what, what a keyword is, right? Anybody know how many keywords or reserved words Python has in here? I guess, lucky guess. Five. Sorry? Five. So it says five. Uh, anyone? <laughs> that's, that's strange, right? I mean, because, I mean, wow, if uh, def is already a keyword, I don't think it's five. So there's, <laughs> there's, there's, actually, a, there's actually a pretty, um, in, yeah. There's actually a really interesting way in which you can, and I'm, I'm guessing most of you probably already, um, already know how to do this, right? But so Python actually has 33 keywords, right? Um, and, and and you can actually uh, get a sense of what these keywords are if you just. Uh, so remember, false, you know, none. I, I think we've, we've pretty much seen most of these things, right? Four from so it's. Such a three. So anyway, so def, so def happens to be one of the one of the thirty three keywords in Python three, right? Okay. So you you define it by specifying the def keyword, the def keyword, and then the user defined uh, function name, right? Um, and so the, the rules that that actually govern the the naming of the function name actually uh, conform to what we've already been. Uh, more or less like uh, taught about, and that's variable names, right? Um, so your your function name must not be any of the three, any of the 33 Python reserved keywords. It must not start with a number. Yeah, remember all those things. What else? What what, what sort of rules govern you know variable names here? It shouldn't be a keyword, right? It shouldn't be a Python reserved keyword. What else? Uh, so he says it shouldn't start with a capital, right? No, it can. It can, right? Sorry? Yeah, so that's, that's more or less like a, so by convention, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's a good thing to have, but. Exactly, right? So that, that, that pretty much uh, more or less like is synonymous to it not starting with a number as well. Yeah? Sorry? Yeah, so she says it can't it can have a space in between as well. True. Yeah. Okay, so just when, you, when you're coming up with your function names, just uh, bear in mind that the, 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 the name uh, corresponding to the function name that you might otherwise be creating at that point um, must take into account all those rules that we just spoke about, right? And then immediately following that is, um, you know, an opening and closing parenthesis with optional parameters inside, right? And we'll, we'll get a sense of what these parameters are in, 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 in a short while from now. And then optional as, as well, what, what, what you'd have immediately afterwards is um, just something to pretty much describe what the function is about. Um, and, and, and it's, it's always a good idea to, to actually use what they call uh, a Python doc string, right? Um, it's, it's, it's one of those uh, 
are two ways in which we can specify comments in functions. Do we remember what the other you know, way of specifying a comment is in, function, in Python? Yeah? Comments, people, annotations in Python. Do we remember how to do that? The pound or the hash, the hash sign, right? All right. OK. And then afterwards, that's when you start uh, specifying you know, the, the logic that is associated with your function, right? And then most importantly, once, well, obviously, once, once you create your function, what you want to do afterwards is you want to be able to use that function, right? Um, and to use the function, you need to evoke it. And so the way that you evoke it you, is you just, um, you just uh, issue the function name, and then immediately afterwards, you uh, specify um, uh, an opening and closing parenthesis. This is in the event that the, the function doesn't take in any parameters, right? Um, otherwise, you'd have to specify um, arguments within the parentheses. OK, so just a, a quick exercise here. Uh, assuming we, we now understand you know, how functional definitions work here. Uh, I'm guessing we do, right? Uh, if, if, if I said, if, if I asked us to say maybe write a simple function that adds two numbers, right? And, and basically outputs uh, the string result on the first line. Uh, okay, let me just write this down so that we, we, we all know what, what it is we are talking about. As, assuming, assuming, I, assuming we want to write a simple function that adds two numbers, and we want the output to be on the first line to be result, followed by is, and then afterwards we want um, the, the actual result of adding the two numbers. So let's say we're adding one and two. We want the third line, or the third print, print, print line statement to be, to be two in the event that we're adding one and one. How would we go about doing this? How would we define this function? I was kind of hoping that the, the, the sessions would be more interactive here. I can sit here and preach, but yeah. OK, so we, we define how, how do we go about doing this. Let's just comment this out. So we want the output to be that, right? And it's saying yeah. def, yeah? Add Sorry? Add like, the name. Uh, what do you want us to name? Add oh, add fine. So it says, OK. <laughs> yeah, so. So here's the thing, right? Um, not that there's anything wrong in, I, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with this, but uh, we, so we haven't yet reached the point where we, we want to start feeding our functions with, with parameters, right? So we, we, want, we want our function to output this, but then we want, at the same time, we want our function not to take in any parameters, right? So, so we don't want it to have A and B. This is what we want. So how, how would we? Sorry? Input statements. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so anyway, it's, it's uh, I mean, the easiest way of doing this is obviously, I mean, you don't, I, I don't think you'd need input, input uh, functions. You just need print line statements to to kind of uh, pr print out uh, uh, to, to print out the things that you want to to print out, right? So here's the thing. I mean, if if so, if we assuming we had this in, in a file and we we execute it, right? What what do you think will happen if we if we run this right now? Sorry. Oh yeah. yeah. So thank you very much, Miss. So nothing will happen, right? Because because we haven't yet we haven't yet uh, 
So we haven't yet done what we need to do when we want to actually make use of the function, and that's to evoke it. I remember what we said, we said for us to be able to, so if we run this, uh, if we run this, you notice that uh, wing won't show us anything here, right? The, the only way we can have wing show us an, an output of what our function does is if we evoke the function, if we call the function, right? Um, I remember we said we, we, we call it using this syntax. So the function name, so this, sorry? Sorry, this, this has to conform with, with, with the name of the function that you've defined up there, right? Um, and you notice that when, when you run it, it actually shows you uh, the, the three statements right there, okay? Okay, so in, in terms of uh, you know code 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 reuse and duplication, right? So, so there's uh, so there's there's this notion that uh, that we mentioned before that you know one of the reasons why we would want to come up with these functions is we want to so we want to 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 try and uh, explore the possibility of trying to reuse the code that we've already created, right? So as an example, um, looking at the previous thing that we did, um, if if I asked if we were to, assuming we weren't using functions and we wanted to, to, to say maybe we have the same output for the summation of uh, three different uh, sets of numbers, right? In this case, we have uh, one, one plus one, two plus two, and three plus three. This is, so the, the, the code snippet on the, on the left is what would otherwise have to come up with, right? But you notice that if we, if we were to, so if, if, if we were to, um, to refactor this code and instead make use of a function, the only thing that we'll have to do is, is come up with, with the first four lines here, right? With the first four lines here. And, and the thing with the first four lines that we have here is that they will enable us to uh, come up with the same output that, well, of course, the, the, the four lines with uh, including the, uh, the function invocations and, and the, uh, the print, line st the print statements that actually do the actual summation, right? But if if, if you look at the the amount of the, the amount of effort that we are putting in on the right and compare it to what we have on the left, you notice that you know already uh, you know uh, if if we go the function route, uh, things become a lot easier because we don't have to redo certain things here, right? Specifically, we don't have to. Uh, over and over again, type the two print line statements, the print result and the print is here, right? Feel free to ask questions if you have questions, by the way. Interrupt me if you want to, right? So, but, but obviously it wouldn't make sense if we, if we decided to just, uh, you know, have a function that doesn't take in parameters, right? We, we want to be able to, to do generic things and one of the ways in which we can do generic things is if, if we feed these functions with uh, what are known as input parameters, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's essentially a list of comma-separated uh, variables that you have in between your your opening and closing parentheses uh, as part of your function definition. Right. Right. Um, and a, a point to note here is that. Uh, so what, what you have, a combination of, uh, a combination of, uh, just a minute, a, a combination of, so a combination of your function name, the def keyword, and the optional list of parameters here, all this is what amounts to what's called as the uh, function signature, right? Okay. But when, when you, when you actually evoke, when you actually evoke your function that takes in uh, uh, parameters, what what you feed the evocation statement, uh, what are known as arguments or actual parameters, right? So so the the values that you use to replace the placeholders that you have in your function are what are known as arguments or actual parameters. Okay. Um, so another quick quick example here. Um, we, we're still building up on, on, on the previous, more or less like building up on the previous uh, example that we looked at, right? Um, if, if, so adding, if, if we wanted to come up with, with, with a program that, uh, that printed the, the summation of two numbers, right? As an example, one and one. And we wanted to output uh, 
The, the two numbers uh, with a plus, obviously, because we are summing up an equal sign and the result. This is, this is one way in which we could do it on the left, left hand side, right? Um, but if we wanted to use uh, a function, and of course, if we wanted to feed that function with parameters, um, the way that we would, we would compute that is we would obviously do the normal things that we would otherwise do when defining a function, and that's the uh, def keyword, the user defined name um, of the function that we are coming up, and then the list of parameters. So in this case, we, uh, we are interested in adding two numbers, right? Meaning that we, 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 we need to feed the function with two parameters, right? Uh, an optional doc screen there, and then a series of print line statements that uh, actually uh, sums up the two numbers. Right. Oh, yes. OK. <laughs> sure, I'll try and do them in a week. OK. So we are saying, we, we are saying, assuming we wanted to add, uh, we want to add two numbers, right, as an example that we have there. Uh, the add function would have to take in two parameters, two input parameters, right? Uh, remember the parameters, uh, so the, the, the names that you feed or that you give to, the parameter names, uh, just like the function name, must conform to the way in which we need to name variables, right? So you need to make sure that uh, they are not reserved keywords, right? You need to make sure that they don't start with a number, yeah? Okay. Um, and so if, if, if we wanted to build on this, this is what we would otherwise do. We feed it uh, parameters A and B. Of course, this could be anything else. It could be C and D if we wanted to, right? Um, but what we want to do is we want to, we, we are saying the, the output that we're interested in, assuming we're adding one and one, is we want this, right? Right? So our, our, our signature clearly uh, has uh, two additional things that we didn't previously have, and that's the parameter name, C and D. So what, what do we do next here? How do we, how do we make sure that we, we come up with this output? Hello? It's simple print line statements here, right? Is it not? So we, what, I, what I'm saying is, in, in case you, you unfortunately don't understand what I'm, I'm trying to imply here is, um, assuming we, as an example, assuming we wanted our program to output something like, like we have on line number one here. We already have our function signature, right? It has a name, and we've already fed it two parameters because we know that we are interested in adding the two parameters, right? What sort of logic would we have to you know, place uh, immediately after the function signature here? For us to, to, to output this, to, for us to output what we have on line number one. Yes? Uh, you have to say print C plus yeah, well, print. Yeah, but uh, in quotation. In quotation. And then you do quotations equals, and then quotations are the C. So, so the thing is, what what we're doing right now has nothing to do, but well, at least the logic, it has nothing to do with functions. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to remind ourselves of what we've done you know, before, now, you know, so that life becomes a lot easier as we progress forward, right? And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find out from you, because I mean, clearly you've attended all the classes I haven't, or I haven't, please, but I'm trying to get a sense of whether or not you, you know how we'd otherwise go about achieving uh, what we have on line number one. Yes. Uh, C, oh, yeah? 
Komm mal hier. Komm mal. So, so, so the, the easiest way of doing this is uh, we, we, we know one thing, right? We, what, what we do know is um, the, way the function of evocation part is, is the easiest part, right? Uh, our arguments can be anything we, we want, right? Like if we wanted to add 5 and 5, all we, we need to do is uh, have 5, comma 5, right? So the easiest way to start with this is you know, having something as simple as this, right? We know that when we execute this, what are we going to see? 10, right? I mean, come on, simple maths here, 10, right? But then the question is, we don't want to see 10, we want to see 5 plus 5. In this case, we want to see 5 plus 5 equals 10. How, how do we do this? Yes? Have we have we not have we not learned um, about uh, concatenation string concatenation? Do we know how to concatenate strings? How do we concatenate strings? Sorry. Yeah, but how? If I had hello, if I had two strings hello and world, and I wanted to combine the two, how would I combine them? That's my question. Comma, right? Yes, thank you. So, so comma, right? So, so what, what would happen if we did this? And then you separate. And, and then what? Separate. With a plus? I'm confused here. Sorry? Could you speak up? You say? Comma. Then there's a plus and words Then there's a comma. And then there's D. You can get a C. Yeah, so, so he's, he's on to something here, right? Which, which makes sense. I mean, so, so, so this is. It's fine. I mean, obviously, you need you need an equal sign. There's an equal sign missing here, but sorry. Oh yeah. So, the, but this is uh, uh, this is sorry, but this is uh, wing at work here. Uh, it has. Uh, <laughs> yes. What version of what? Oh. Uh, She's asking what version of Wing IDE I'm using. I, I think it's uh, 5.1.3. But I certainly got the latest version. Well, it look, uh, does it look different from yours? Yeah. Well, sorry, it looks different because I'm using a different OS, I suppose. I, yeah, it makes, I, I don't think it makes a difference anyway. I mean, what's important is what we have the quantity here. <laughs> But anyway, we, we don't have to sit and, and argue. If, if, if we need to remind ourselves about how to concatenate strings, please let us read, because this is, this is very important. So what, what I had before, before I go in, what, what I had before, what I had before was, uh, we, we did, when we looked at strings, um, what, one of the things that we, one of the other things uh, that we looked at um, was uh, string formatting, right? Do you remember string, how to format string? So I had a, uh, do, we, do, do we all? <laughs> so I, I previously, if, if you remember in the, uh, <laughs> So, so this is. I, I, th I think I, I, I probably had something, something like this before, right? Um, in, in the 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so what, what I had, what I had, what I had before. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, forgotten the syntax here. But anyway, bottom line is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't put a comment and say, see, this deal. No, 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 not over there. Um, yeah, okay, I'll check. Yeah, over here, right? Anyway, so what I was trying to say is, uh, in, in the event that if, 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 if some of you get confused with what you see in the slides, I mean, this, this is what we learned with uh, Professor Berman when we were looking at string formatting. Um, this, is, this is one way in which we can format strings, right? It's, it's not important, but you can do it in whatever way you feel comfortable. You can use commas if you want to. Um, I just happen to have used this. Right. All right. Yes. Sorry. I'm sorry, I can't. Oh, it's. Oh, you, you mean this, this print line statement here? Well, so this is, uh, it, it has, so this is strong string formatting. If, if, if you, I'm assuming you covered string formatting with Professor Perlman. Did you or did you not? You didn't. Uh, if you didn't, it's fine. But what, what this is doing is the, uh, so the, the, the two S's are my placeholders, right? Um, and what, what the placeholders do is, I think it, it works better with, with an example here. What, what the, what the place, what the placeholders do is, whenever you want to, hello, do you, do you remember this? Sorry? So the, the, the string is just a substitution. It can be an, it can be a number. It can be an, so. So that the excuse me, the the S can be anything. It can be a number. It can be if if I want, I can I can replace this with. It, it can be. It's just a sub, I'm, I'm just substituting, right? If if I want to substitute more than one variable within my string, uh, all I have to do is add another substitution variable here, right? Um, and of course, you want more than one, so I would do that, right? Uh, come on. <laughs> So it, it really doesn't, if you want three, then you know, you're just substituting numbers. It really, it's besides the point, anyway. OK. So anyway, uh, we, I, I, I hope we, we, we are all getting a hang of you know, what input parameters are and what, you know, how we go about defining functions and you know, actually invoking them, right? Um, so just uh, something that we previously spoke about, and that's the distinction between input parameters and, and arguments here, just something I would like to emphasize is the fact that <clears throat> your, your formal input parameters are what you have as part of your functional signature, right? So the things that you have after the functional name when you're defining your function in the parentheses are your input parameters, your actual input parameters, right? And when you, when you get to evoke the function, the user-defined variables that you feed the function are your arguments, right? Or your, well, your actual parameters, formal parameters, right? 
semantics here. In the event that you need to provide a, dis a, a distinction between the two. But of course, when, when you are when you're trying to talk to someone about, about functions, uh, I think that the, the line between, so the line between input parameters and arguments is actually, uh, I mean, it's, it's, not that, it, it's not that much, so you could just as well easily interchange the two, right? Um, but if a, a question comes in an exam where you're asked to provide a distinction between the two, just remember that there are, there's a, a fundamental uh, difference between arguments and formal parameters, right? Your actual parameters um, are part of your uh, functional definition, and your arguments or your actual parameters are part of your functional invocation process. OK, so uh, simple exercise here, right? Uh, if, if, if I said we wanted to write a function that's able to print the last name of a random student you know, currently present in the lecture hall here. Uh, and we wanted to output something like, you know, student is enrolled for CSC 1017F. How, how, would, we, how would we go about doing this? Do, can, can we, but, but first, not how do we go about doing this, but are we able to do this, you know? Are we able to come up with an appropriate functional definition, you know, a functional signature? Um, the, the logic, not so much, because the assumption we're making here is that all of us are able to, yes, hi. Sorry? An array. Oh, so, so she's, she's saying that we need an array for this. Uh, well, so maybe the wording of my, my question here is, is a bit misleading. But what I'm trying to say is if, if we wanted to come up with a function, right, uh, with whatever name, let's say the name of the function is x, um, and we wanted that function to, to print, well, if, if we gave it, so if we, uh, if, if we specified a random name of a student, you know, currently present, we wanted it to print student is enrolled for that. Are we able to do this? The logic is simple, right? That's probably the simplest part, right? But are we able to come up with an appropriate functional definition and the corresponding logic and be able to evoke that function? Would we do that? How many, how many parameters do you suppose our function would have? Two. OK. So uh, uh, the good side over there says two, right? Uh, two parameters. OK, let's say it's x and y, yes, and? How would we go about you know, using these parameters so that we, we, we actually had a student is enrolled for that? Sorry? Why? Is enrolled for CSC. So why? Is do you want this to be a string? Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, so but but the x is redundant, right? Do you do you think we? Not that there's anything wrong with this, but so so here's the thing. I mean, there's a it's something I just want to emphasize here. It's a he. So he, he says that uh, one way in which we could, this will work, by the way. There's nothing wrong with it, right? Uh, unless if someone thinks there's something wrong with it. But there's, there's really nothing wrong with this. If we evoke, uh, if we evoke x here, uh, with what? Your, your name? Not four, obvious. John. Uh, John. Well. Is this how you want us to evoke it? Yeah, thank you. So, so here's the thing, right? Uh, so, so there's there's nothing wrong in in us, you know, going about defining this function using his his way of thinking here. It, this will work actually. Uh, this will work, but the, the the only thing is, the the x is redundant because we're not. And, and sorry here, uh, people might get confused here. Uh, 
because the, the, the name of the function is x, and then you know, one of the parameters is x as well. So we don't want people to get confused here. So there's, what I'm trying to say is there's, there's, there's really absolutely nothing wrong in us defining the function the way that he suggested. But the, the only drawback here, the only concern is that the x is redundant because we're not using the x, and so it makes no sense for us to have the x, right? Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, why does it put the output in inverted commas? So, sorry, it's, it's my wing, probably my wing configuration. So I, I probably need to fix it. Uh, it <laughs> yeah, but it's, it works just fine. It's my wing configuration. Uh, it just just to, to, to show you that it works just fine here. Uh, So it, it works just fine. The function works just fine. Do we do we understand what's going on here? Because I, I mean the yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Excuse me. Uh, if, if you could just quiet down a little. I'm trying to. We are trying to understand what she's yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, yeah. So she's she's saying. Uh, well, I mean, so an argument would be. Uh, yeah, I mean, so she's saying uh, the, the x wouldn't be redundant if we if we chose to to include um, the f first name and last name as part of our two input parameters, right? Yeah, you could do that. Yes, uh, but uh, I would argue that you could just as easily uh, do this and yeah. I mean, but 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 yeah, I was, I was just trying to point out that it was redundant if we if we decided to use his way of thinking because we weren't using the x anyway, right? Are there are there any questions with regards to functional definitions here and method? Uh, clearly, I hope we understand what this thing. Anyway. So. Um, but but the thing is that the use of so the the, the use of parameters doesn't really uh, get that exciting if we don't uh, make mention of default parameters, right? Um, so so there are certain times when uh, and I su I suppose uh, what we had what we had previously is a classic example, right? There, there are certain times when we we might we might actually have uh, a range a range of parameters. But as part of our logic, it, it might turn out that, that we, might, we might not actually need to have, uh, you know, to, we, we might not actually need to, to use all the, all the parameters that are present right in there. Um, in which case, uh, default parameters be, become really, really useful, right? Uh, and I'm guessing as, as an example, using his, his method, uh, if, if there was, uh, So anyway, uh, optional parameters. If if there was uh, if if we wanted to if if we still wanted to to, to go about <laughs> so if 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 we wanted to if it, sorry oh yeah thank you you did right uh, so. So there are times when we want, there are times when we we might need to. So d d default parameters come in handy when we, when we when we decide to, when we decide to you know make use of optional parameters, right? So as an example, if if we wanted to print out the student name, and it so happened that there was someone in here who didn't necessarily have a last name, I only had one name, right? I'm told there are places somewhere out there where people only have one name. If, if that was the case, then default parameters would come in handy using his approach, right? Because we'd still have the two parameters. Uh, so the first parameter, like she said, or suggested, first parameter would conform to the first name. The uh, second parameter would conform to the last name. But then would would actually define our function in such a way um, that our logic takes into account the fact that there could potentially be people out there that have only one name. 
right? And the way that you go about doing that is by, oh sorry, by using default parameters, right? So, so the, the syntax is, I was going to go to wing, but the, the syntax is pretty easy. Um, you actually make use of named parameters. So you, you, you assign, as, as part of your, your parameter definition, the parameters that are part of a parameter list in the functional signature that you want to be default parameters have to be assigned a default value, right? So you use the assignment operator to assign the default value to those parameters. As an example, um, and the syntax here where we have a functional name that has two parameters, first and last name, uh, John and Doe, right? So they're all optional parameters. What this means is that, so what this means is that if we, if we printed out first and last name, by default, uh, upon invoking functional name, what we'll print out is John and Doe, right? What, what do you suppose if, if, if we wanted to come up with, uh, this is the thing, right? If we wanted to come up with a logic uh, where uh, we wanted to check to see if, if a person had, uh, we wanted to check to see if a person uh, only had one name, in which case we just print out that one name. Uh, the assumption is that the, the one name is the last name, right, here. Could be the first name, doesn't really matter. How would we go about doing this as part of our logic in the function? Are we, is this, oh, is this? Are, you, are, are people living, is this? Uh, no, 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 it's, I think it's going to be, it's going to be, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, it's only up to 11, I suppose. Uh, yeah, let's just finish the slide. I'm, I'm trying to, we'll probably go through it again. I'm trying to, to understand, if, if we wanted to, can you think of, you know, what, what sort of logic would we have as part of our function here? Sorry? Ah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th th thank you very much. Yeah. So, so he's he's saying we could we could check. So we could have one of these variables as by default being empty, right? Um, and then as part of our logic, as as part of our logic. So what he's saying, uh, what he's suggesting is, uh, sure, we, we would say x would assume x is the first name, and uh, the assumption is that. Uh, this thing that we're trying to come up with is, is trying to work in such a way that, uh, aha, this is, this is it right here. Uh, his, his way of thinking is that we, we check, uh, we check if, if y is empty, right? Okay. And then what when y is empty? You want us to check if y is empty? How do we check? Sorry? So, so there's you, you might think that this is not uh, more interesting or important, but it, it, it might just turn out that it is important. He's, he's actually suggesting to us to do a couple of interesting things, right? He's saying if we wanted to, if we wanted to implement, yeah, okay. if we wanted to implement this, we'd have to check if it was empty. But again, he's saying we don't have to check if it was empty. But then the thing is, remember these are just placeholders, right? As part of our functional invocation. As, as one option, this is, so as, as, as one option in line number seven, it's, our invocation is not actually empty, right? So we'd still actually have to check. So what we're saying is if this, if, 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 if this person that I wanted to check for happens to be one individual who doesn't have a last name or doesn't have a first name, uh, we'd have to check and, and just print out what? X. X, yeah. Else, x, y, right? 
Do you, do you guys think, you guys, if, if we were to, do, do you think, just before you go, please, quickly, do you, do, you, do, you think, do you think this will run and execute without a problem, by the way? Why, why not? In the what? When? Yes. So, I'll, sorry, I'll, I'll quickly, I'll quickly come back. This is—I just wanted you to see this. It won't take long, I promise. Now, it's, uh, he's saying it won't. With this, with this won't work. He's saying this won't work, right? I don't know. I mean, I think it will work, right? <laughs> but, but what I wanted to, what I wanted to ask is, do you think this will work? Sorry. It, yeah, are you saying it will work? Yeah, I mean, so uh, cl clearly we are, we are getting somewhere here. People are at least following, and I'm, I'm, I'm 